So in terms of managing infections, the reality is sometimes they're going to occur. No one has a 0% infection rate for skin cancer surgery. If your infection rate is low as 1%, you're doing extremely well. And some people will have extremely low infection rates. It then also depends on how you count infection because it's a very subjective, ambiguous thing of what's an infected wound rather than an inflamed wound. When there is an infection, the first thing is I've always warned the patient about it. So part of my instructions at the time of surgery is infection is possible. If you have these signs, please let me know. I want to know about every infection. I'd like the patient to come back so we can manage the infection and I'd rather manage it early. So I tell them I don't want to have an infection, but it can happen. If you think the wound might be infected, please come back. What tends to happen is either, yes, they do come back and we can fix the infection quickly, or they don't come back and they blame themselves. They keep on saying, I'm sorry, doctor, I had a wound infection. You told me to come back earlier, but I didn't follow your instructions. It's not your fault, it's mine. But in the end of the day, we got it all fixed up. There's some patients who don't worry about their wound infection. They're used to being dirty and grubby and all of their wounds get pussy and they regard that as normal. And so they don't try to follow that instruction about wound care and wound infections. But others who do get an infection uh, and they come back early and we confirm that it's looking like it is infection going on, oral antibiotics. So as a general rule, you always want to use oral antibiotics to manage a wound infection, not topical antibiotics. A wound infection after surgery, when you've closed up the wound, means that the bacteria are under the skin. If you're putting something on the surface of the skin, the antibiotics aren't getting to where you need them. So oral antibiotics is the most important part of managing wound infections after the fact of warning the patient about it and preparing them for it so they get the thing treated early. In terms of managing infections, the ideal way is to prevent infections. So you can do some things for prevention preoperatively, some things for prevention during the procedure and some things for preventing infection after the procedure. It also depends on what the patient's health is like as well. So someone with diabetes or immunosuppressed has a much higher rate of infection. For some people, even though this, the risk of the surgery is low, their risk of infection is high because of their underlying health. Some of those people, you do use preoperative antibiotics as a single dose about 60 to 90 minutes before the surgery uh, because of that risk. In terms of shaving the skin before surgery, if you use a razor blade and you actually shave the hairs flat with the surface, it causes a lot of little micro cuts. And then after the surgery, you're then occluding those areas. That does increase your risk of getting infections. So if you need to remove hairs from the area, you're better off using a clipper to remove the hairs rather than shaving. Therefore, the hairs are one to two millimetres off the surface, but you're not disturbing the skin in between the hairs uh, and therefore decreasing your risk of infection. During the surgery, obviously, you need to use some sort of... Uh, preoperative uh, clean, whether that's uh, alcohol or whether that's uh, aqueous based, uh, alcohol works better, um, it evaporates quickly. The risk with alcohol in your um, antiseptic preparations is it's flammable. So using a potentially flammable uh, antiseptic during the procedure and you're also using a hypercator does create a relevant risk. Using an alcohol based preparation before the procedure is quite safe because the alcohol's already evaporated away and therefore won't catch. So think about the time between putting an antiseptic solution on and when you might be using the hypercator in terms of what type of solution to use. My normal habits, I have an alcohol-based antiseptic, usually chlorhexidine, used preoperatively, as well as the simple alcohol wipes used preoperatively. Whilst during the procedure to clean the area, I use simple normal saline. So normal saline inside the wound won't cause any irritation, and normal saline is not a risk of actually igniting as a consequence of your hypercator. In terms of post-operative care, I don't routinely use post-operative antibiotics. If I need to use oral antibiotics, I'll do it as a preoperative dose rather than post-operative. And I'd rather see the patient if they think there's an infection going on. For lower legs, I have a tendency to review them anyway. So I might have a plan of, we're gonna leave your sutures in for 14 days, but I'll see you at seven days to make sure there's no signs of early wound infection. And that's just simply due to the likely risk of a wound infection in the lower leg in an elderly person. Um, and if they do get that happening, we've got them into the surgery, we can treat the infection earlier and speed up the healing of the wound.